Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. This is episode number five of my Luminar 2018 tutorial series. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button and keep coming back. I got a lot more to do. Um, this episode is about masking and I get a lot of questions about masking and some people say, you know, hey, I understand there's filter masking. What's that? And what's the difference between that layer masking? So we'll talk about that. And then there's different kinds of masks. So here's what we're going to cover. There's kind of two places, for lack of a better word, that you can apply a mask. You can apply a mask for an individual filter, and that's called a filter mask. Or you can create a layer and do a mask for that entire layer, and that's called a layer mask. The difference is a filter mask is you're masking in that specific filter, and that's it. A layer mask is you're masking in every bit of the uh, filters that are used on that layer uh, in, onto the photo. Um, and a mask, you're basically painting. So I'll show you what that is. It's, it's very simple. Um, okay, so that's the two places, right? Filter masking or layer masking. And then there's really four types of masks. You can uh, use a brush mask where you brush it in yourself. You can use a radial mask where uh, you click and drag to build a circle or a circular shape and you can adjust it. Um, third is a gradient mask where you start usually at the top and you drop a gradient in and you can sort of have a sort of a graduated effect of the uh, intensity of, of that layer or filter mask being higher at the top and gradually fading out towards the bottom. And then there's a luminosity mask. That's number four. Um, and I've got an old video. It, it's maybe a year or more old about luminosity masking. Uh, but basically in a, a very simple way is it's a mask based on um, luminosity values or light values, exposure values. And essentially what that means is the system, Luminar, will create the mask for you automatically on your photo, on a layer, or on a filter, which is really cool, um, based on the light values. And so in um, you know the brighter parts of the photo, it'll be more intense, you know, a higher opacity mask. And in the darker parts of the photo, it'll be less intense or a lower intensity uh, opacity mask. So that's it, let's get started. Um, okay, so I have this photo. And all I've done, I've got my base photo, I'm on the base layer, you can see that here, I'm in my layers palette, I'm on my base layer. All I did is I added the adjustable gradient because it was dark at the bottom and I wanted to slide it. So there's the edit, uh, I just dragged the slider to the right to brighten it and I'm good. So I'm gonna add a filter and this is gonna be saturation and vibrance. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just drag these all the way to the right. And it's not because I like that look, that's kind of the clown vomit thing that I've talked about, but, um, I just want to make it really obvious what I'm doing. So I'm going to go kind of crazy. So this is going to be a filter mask, right? I'm not masking this entire layer. I've got a filter here. And if you click on the brush on your filter, you see you have four choices, brush, radial, gradient, and luminosity. So I'm going to say brush. I've got a big brush because I want to paint this in really big and fast across the sky. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm just painting these colors into the sky. There's no color going into the sand, right? Click that button, you can see your mask. And, and I always miss some stuff, that's okay. You know, I'm not, uh, this isn't how to be precise. This is Jim doing a quick demo. So that's a brush mask on a filter. So a filter mask uh, using a brush, right? So there's a drop down menu over here. You can disable the mask if you want. Um, and if I turn this off, you could see that the mask is disabled, which means the part that I painted on uh, is no longer being. Um, selected, for lack of a better word. And so you can see the X over here, the filter mask is turned off, so the saturation vibrance is going across the entire photo. So I'm gonna go back to enable. Um, and now you can see that the sand is no longer bright orange, right? Uh, a fill mask will cover the entire frame. Invert it, there you go. Now the part that I painted has been flipped and it's not painted and the unpainted part, which is the sand, is painted, right? I'm gonna flip that back because that looks a little too crazy, maybe even crazier than that. Um, and then you can copy the mask if you're on a layer and you wanna copy the mask from one layer and then put it on another layer to do more edits or maybe on the next layer and then flip it or invert it and then mask, uh, you know, you've already got a mask made so you can invert it and then do the opposite parts of the photo with something different. Um, show mask, density, um, let me turn this back on. Okay, density. If I'm at zero, it's covering the whole thing. And if I'm at 100, it's doing what I painted, right? That's it. Feathering is kind of cool. This is basically a gradient. So look at that, right? So you can see that at no feathering, 
it's it's a hard line, hard edge, uh, where I, I took my mouse across uh, and painted. But when I feather, it uh, it changes that. And so if you look at that, it's more almost like a gradient. Actually, it looks pretty good. It's kind of gently, you know, descends across the photo in terms of how the mask is, is looking. I'm going to go back to the way it was. And there you go. So that's what those controls are. Erase is the same thing. It's just the opposite. You come over here and you can erase if you wanted to. Uh, you can choose your... Uh, brush settings, softness, opacity here, and if you're using a tablet, you can do that. And you can also choose size, softness, and opacity here. So let's say I'm done, and there we go. So I've got a brush mask that I just put on this filter, on a filter, right? So I'm just gonna kill that, it's just kinda easier. I'm gonna go add it again. Saturation and vibrance, all the way to the right, just go crazy, close that, and now this time, I'm still using a filter mask because I'm just doing this filter. I'm gonna use a radial. So as you can see, it says click and drag to draw a circle. So wherever you start your mouse is where the circle is gonna start. Notice that where the mask is, is does not have the edit and outside the mask does. So that's where this invert button comes in. If you click it, it's the other way around. Now in this case, it'd probably be smarter to have that there and kind of get some of that make it basically a black and white looking sort of photo with a bright orange sun. Um, I inverted just for fun. You can also stretch this out, change the shape, and you can drag this and pull this in like that. Let's see, nope, like that, sorry, there you go. And this is sort of your gradient section as you probably saw, right? So very flexible, very adaptable, kind of fun to use. I use it like if I'm creating a fake sun uh, this is before we had the sun rays filter. Um, I used to create like a fake sun by just creating a high exposure, really warm temperature spot that makes it look like the sun's coming into a photo. I don't use radio, radial filters a lot. Uh, you could also use it. Here's a cool idea. If you've got a lamp post at night shining down on the street, but the light's kind of diffused, you could use the radial filter to make a spot as though the light is shining on the uh, pavement or something, for example. So that's a radial filter. Now I'm gonna go get the same filter again and do the same thing. And I'm just gonna jack this up all the way to the right. And still on a filter mask, I haven't added any, any layers. I'm gonna do a gradient. So as you see, click and draw, uh, sorry, click and drag to draw the gradient. So I started there. This allows you, you grab this button to move it up and down. You can turn it if you'd like to tilt it. And you can move these bars all you're doing is extending, these are kind of the gradient zones, right? 100% opacity mask above, let me show you, actually. 100% opacity mask above that line, a less intense mask in that top section, very low intensity mask there, and then no mask whatsoever below. So you can collapse this to make that line tighter if you want, you can make it larger if you want, you can rotate it, like I said, you can move it around, it doesn't matter. So that's how a gradient mask works, and it's fabulous for skies. Um, even if you don't have a flat horizon, you just have the gradient fade out. And then of course, you know, if you have your mask like that, um, you can erase things if you don't need them. So it's very powerful, it's a fabulous tool, I use it all the time. And that is a gradient mask. One more time. Saturation and vibrance. All right, here we go. We're having fun. Are you having fun? I hope you're having fun. Okay, this is photography. It's supposed to be fun. Okay, now still a filter. I'm going to click that little uh, paintbrush and I'm going to click luminosity mask. And you're going to say, hey, that looks a little different. Now let me show you the before and the after. So here's the deal on luminosity mask. Because they're masks based on light value, as I said, you're going to get more intense coverage of whatever your edit is in the uh, brighter parts of the photo and less in the darker parts. But really, to me, what that means is I'm at 100 on saturation and vibrance. I mean, that's a crazy clown vomit, off the charts kind of color, saturation and vibrance. It's just, it's unnatural. But you know what? I applied a luminosity mask and guess what? That looks pretty good actually, right? And so it's a great way to have a very much less intense sort of look. Now, I've had somebody ask me, say, hey, Jim, I applied the luminosity mask. Actually, it's applied automatically, but I can't see it. Where's the mask? Well, if you click on brush and just go back into brush, you can come over here and click it. There's your luminosity mask. So as you can see, in the brighter parts of the photo, it's much uh, more intense. 
and in the dark parts of the photo, it's almost not even there. You can also come in here and you could just say erase and you could erase it from some parts of the photo and just say, I don't want my luminosity mask to cover any of that. Now that's a sloppy job of painting and I'm sorry, but I just took that down and there you go. There's a luminosity mask that I've edited on a filter. So it's a filter mask with a lumin luminosity mask applied. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Okay, so we're moving right along. So that's filter masking. That's uh, one of two, right? The other one's layer masking. And in filter masking, you have brush, radial, gradient, and luminosity. I hope that helps. Now I'm gonna go add a layer, new adjustment layer. Nothing's here, right? I got my base layer with a one filter on it and layer one that I just added with nothing on it. Now you can just go do the exact same thing. You can just say, I'm gonna stick that on there and go crazy. And then just for fun, I'm gonna add brilliance and warmth because the reason I use, and that's horrible, I get it. I can't even look at it to be honest. Let me turn that off. Um, the reason I use layer masks is because a filter mask is just for that one filter. So you can do five, six, seven different filters and filter mask them on the same layer into the same spot on a photo. But to me, the power of a layer mask is if you're gonna stick a bunch of stuff that you gotta paint multiple times into the same parts of the photo, just add a new layer and mask it once. So let's say I did all that, and now I can come over here and choose brush, radial, or gradient, or luminosity for the entire layer. I'm gonna choose luminosity just to see how much, and it's still pretty intense, not too bad, but let me see if I take that filter mask uh, amount down, that's gonna help. So I don't know if you've seen this, but there's a filter amount slider. So even though my filters are crazy jacked up to the right, the amount for the entire layer, and this is layer specific, I've reduced. And so I have, let me drag that back up, all right? Pretty intense even with the luminosity mask, but now with the filter amount down, that looks pretty reasonable in, in most cases. I mean, it's kind of splotchy, it's not perfect, but compared to the original, it's not bad. So that's a layer mask. And the reason I would use a layer mask is because I wanna do a bunch of edits to the same place, or if you're gonna do a luminosity mask, but you wanna include two, three, four, five different filters, no point filter masking each one and then sticking a luminosity mask or a brush mask, just stick them all in the same layer and do the mask once on that layer. So that's the difference. Otherwise, the settings and the choices are all the same on a layer as they are on a filter. You can do a brush, a radial, a gradient, or a luminosity mask. And so that's it, my friends. I'm not gonna walk through examples of each of those on a layer. I think you got it. And so uh, that's how it works. Oh, let me go show you. I'm just gonna click brush and let me show you the luminosity mask. There it is, applied to the layer, right? And so that's how it works. Luminosity masks are very powerful. I highly recommend you experiment with them. I've often done, well, I'll take a, a preset that's just crazy colorful, but it, I like it, stick a luminosity mask on it, and it looks pretty darn good. Stack another preset, and you know, when you're stacking presets, you're getting more and more color and detail, but stick a luminosity mask on that one, and guess what? Much more subtle implementation of the, uh, of the look. So it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of power. I highly recommend checking them out. And that's a tutorial on masking. So we covered filter masking and layer masking. The difference is filters can all go, uh, filter masks can all go in the same layer. I would only do that if I'm masking into different parts of the photo. Otherwise, go to a layer mask because if you're masking everything into the same parts of the photo, the layer does it one time, right? So stick all your edits on a layer, then mask it in and you're done. So we covered those two. And then we covered brush masking, radial masking, gradient masking, and of course my favorite, luminosity masking. That's four. I hope it helps. That's all I got, my friends. Thanks for watching. I've got more episodes coming. I'm gonna dig into some light stuff, some details, some colors, and uh, a lot of other fun stuff. Probably gonna do some monochromes. Um, I'm even trying to think about doing portraits. Um, and I don't do portraits, so <laughs> no promises. It's not really my thing. But that's it. I've had a lot of fun making these. Keep watching. Like, comment, share with your friends. Um, subscribe if you haven't, and keep coming back. I'm gonna shut up now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, my friends, and... Adiós.